Welcome, welcome everyone. This is Kurt James Channel. Now we are back to our new episodes of two semi-reality captions and comparison featured by Wild Rift, Lake of Legends versus the Mobile Legend Bang Bang. But before that, please like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell running so you will be notified to our new next episode video. Let's do this! Yorick Mori Our story begins in the holy lands of Blessed Isle. There, in a fishing village, young Yorick was raised. But he was unlike all other children. He had the ability to see and hear the dead. At first, he was terrified. Whenever someone in the village died, Yorick would stay awake all night waiting for the new visitor to appear. He couldn't understand why the spirit chose to hound him, and his parents wouldn't help him either. They told him that what he saw were nothing but nightmares. In time, he realized that the souls wouldn't harm him, that they were simply lost and that they needed to find the way to the afterlife. Since only Yorick could see these spirits, he took it as his job to escort them into the eternity. Soon he found enjoyment in his task. Every new ghost was a new friend. Unfortunately, none of them would stay forever, and every ghost would eventually find their place. To the dead, he was a saver, but to the living, he was an outcast. The villagers only saw a disturbed little boy who spoke to people who weren't there. Tales of Yorick's vision soon spread beyond the village and drew the attention of a small order of monks who lived at the heart of the Blessed Isles. Few of them traveled all the way to Yorick's village with an offer to join their faith. With no surprise, Yorick agreed to journey to their monastery and there he learned the ways of the Brethren of the Dusk and the true significance of their work. Every monk was equipped with a spade as a symbol of their duty to keep souls in their place. Each of them also wore a vial of water from the Blessed Isle's sacred spring. These were the tears of life and they represented the monk's duty to heal the living. Yet, no matter how he tried, Yorick could never gain the acceptance of the other monks. To them, he was a tangible proof of things that should only be known through faith. Their whole lives they were trying to listen to the dead, but even without training, Yorick could do so much more. Perhaps as an act of jealousy, Yorick was shunned by his brothers and he found himself alone again. One morning, as he tended to his duties at the cemetery, Yorick was interrupted by the sight of a pitch black cloud rolling across the surface of the blessed eyes, devouring everything in its path. Yorick tried to run, but the cloud quickly enveloped him and plunged him into shadow. All around Yorick, living things began to wither and twist, corrupted by the foul magic in the black mist. People, animals and even plants began to transform into vile ghoulish mockeries of their former selves. Whispers emanated from the rotten air around him, and his brothers began ripping the vials of healing water from their necks, as if the objects were causing them pain. A moment later, Yorick watched in horror as the monks' souls were ripped from their bodies, leaving cold, failed corpses behind. Among the quieting screams of his brethren, Yorick could hear voices within the mist. Remove it. Join us. We will become one. He felt his fingers grasping for the vial at his neck, but he was able to force his hands away from his throat and commanded the howling souls to stop. The black mist screamed violently and darkness overtook him. When Yorick awoke, 
The winds had gone and the once fertile lands had transformed into hellscape of the Shadow Isles. The black mist wrapped itself around him, trying to overtake the one living thing on the Shadow Isles. Yorick noticed that the mist dared not to touch the holy vial at his neck. He realized that it was all that kept him alive. During the following days, Yorick wandered around trying to find other survivors. But everywhere he went, he witnessed wretched spirits rising from the bodies of the dead. He slowly started picking up on the events that led to this cataclysm. A king had arrived seeking to resurrect his queen, but instead he had doomed the isles and everything on them. Yorick wished to find this ruined king and undo the curse he had unleashed, but he felt powerless in the face of the seemingly endless death that surrounded him. Almost lost with grief, Yorick began to speak to the spirits around him, attempting to find solace with them as he had as a child. Instead, as he communed with the mist, corpses left the graves guided by his voice. He realized the bodies he once buried in his duty were now in his command. A glimmer of hope shone from the heart of his despair. To free the dead from the Shadow Isles, Yorick would wield their power and their strength. In order to end the curse, he would be forced to use it. Hundred years passed and Yorick finally found another living being. A man in a horrible state laying nearby a shipwreck. His bones were broken and he was bleeding from open wounds. Spirits of the black mist started swirling around him, ready to feast on a warm flesh. But Yorick would not allow them. He threw the man onto his shoulder and marched back into his old monastery. Once they arrived, he put the man onto a massive stone table and began to check his vitals. Most of the man's ribs were shattered, and one of his lungs had collapsed. Why do you waste your time? Asked a chorus of voices speaking in unison with the mist on Yorick's back. Yorick remained silent. He left the table and made his way to a heavy door at the back of the room. He had to press his shoulder against it to open it. So much effort for naught, whispered the mist. Let us have him. Again, Yorick stayed silent while he looked through scrolls, herbs and other medicine. For a moment, Yorick stared at these items, trying to remember how to use them. He picked up a few that looked familiar. Bandages yellow with age and some ointment that had long turned to crust. Then he returned back to the man. Just leave him, said the mist. He was ours the moment he came ashore. Quiet, snapped Yorick. The man on the table was now gasping for breath. Knowing he had little time to save him, Yorick tried to bind his wounds, but the rotten bandages fell apart as quickly as he could apply them. The man grabbed Yorick's hand in agonized desperation. Yorick knew there was only one thing that could save the man's life. The holy vial hanging around his neck. But Yorick knew that the man was doomed and if he used the tears of life, he would be doomed. He stepped back from the table and watched as the man's chest rose and fell for the last time. The black mist filled the room, spirits crawling out from it in anticipation. The mist shivered eagerly, then ripped the dead man's soul from his body. It cried loudly before it was devoured by its new host. Yorick stood motionless in the room and uttered a barely remembered prayer. He looked at the soulless husk on the table, a bitter reminder of the task he had yet to complete. While the curse of ruination remained, anyone who would come to these isles would suffer the same fate. He had to bring peace to these cursed islands, but after years of searching, all he had found were whispers about a ruined king. He needed answers. With a single motion of Yorick's hand, a tiny portion of mist poured into the man's body. A moment later, it rose from the table. It could see, it could hear, 
and it could work. Help me, said Yorick. The body shambled out through the halls of the monastery. It continued onward past countless rows of graves until it disappeared into the mist. Perhaps this one would return with the answer. And that is where Yorick's story ends. I am not going to lie. This was a good one. It is even better when you listen to the poem about Shadow Wild that Riot released. I will put the link to it into the description. By Shadow Isle standards, York's a pretty good guy. The former monk just wants to free the souls who have spent a millennium trapped in the black mists of the Isle. And he is willing to do some bad things to carry out his holy mission. York carries the burden of a thousand condemned souls swirling infinitely in the ghoulish cape on his back. The shepherd uses these lost spirits to fight anyone who gets in his way. They may not like it, but York doesn't give a damn. He'll do whatever it takes to win, even if it means he's got to bring a little bit of hell along with him. Our souls are a small price to pay to cleanse this land. York's passive is Shepherd of Souls. Whenever an enemy minion or neutral monster dies near York, they'll occasionally leave behind a grave. Enemy champs that die near York always leave one. Graves last until York moves away. Now what do graves do, you ask? Well, heads up, it's about to get spooky. York's Q gives him access to two separate abilities, Last Rite and Awakening. Last Rites empowers the Shepherd's next basic attack, causing it to deal bonus damage and restore a little health. If York is below half health, the healing effect is doubled. If Last Rites kills any target, a grave is created. If there are at least three graves nearby and Last Rites on cooldown, York can cast Awakening to raise Mistwalkers from the nearby graves. Mistwalkers basically act like nasty little minions, although you can only have up to four of them at once in your undead entourage, and they die if they roam too far from York. Also, none of the graves can have a cigar. If York wants to win early trades in lane, he's gotta wait until he's planted a proper cemetery before going in. Here, Aurelia screws up by hanging too close to York's graves. When the Mistwalkers rise, York follows them in to deal additional damage and recover some lost health, earning an easy advantage. York's W is Dark Procession. The Shepherd yanks a bundle of corpses straight from the earth, forming a wall of rotting flesh that encircles the target area. The wall decomposes on its own after a few seconds, but can also be destroyed by enemy basic attacks, whether they're trapped or not. York and his allies can freely pass through the Dark Procession. When you need to lock down a key target or get away from the living, a big ring of coagulated corpses is just the thing you need. Here, York aims Dark Procession right on top of himself to create a cage that only he can escape from. Unlike Kled, York doesn't need a rope to make a bear trap. York's E is Morning Mist. When cast, York hurls a glob of mist that damages and slows enemies. York gets a movement speed bonus when moving toward enemies marked by the mist, but the ability's true power is that it's the one way you can direct the actions of the otherwise dumb mist walkers. Your walkers gain movement speed and leap toward mist-soaked targets, harassing them until their bloody end. When you need to stick to a target, a little dab of mist can help clog up your lane opponent's wheels. The blood mage almost made it out of this trade, but the mist helped the shepherd take Vlad's health bar down to red. Where it York's ultimate is Eulogy of the Isles. York summons the Maiden of the Mist, and at higher ranks she'll bring some mist walkers with her. The Maiden moves and attacks on her own, pushing down the lane and immediately raising any enemies that die near her as mist walkers. The Maiden disappears whenever York dies, but unlike mist walkers, she doesn't have to stay near him to stay alive. When York attacks the Maiden's target, he'll deal bonus magic damage based on the enemy's maximum health. If the Shepherd gets into a fight within earshot of the Maiden though, she will be smart enough to follow and lend him a helping hand. 
The bonus damage granted by the Maiden makes her scary strong in one-on-one -on -one duels. Here, York doesn't need to wait for more grace before starting the fight. Instead, he busts out his pretty little lady friend and goes straight for the kill. The spectral duo stood united, giving Shen no time to do the same. When Yorick goes in for a trade, it's best if he brings a swarm with him. Here, Yorick waits until he has a maximum four graves up, then unleashes a dark procession and awakens his ghoul army the moment Gangplank steps up for some minions. With the Saltwater Scourge trapped in the fight, Yorick sicks his undead buddies on him using a well-aimed spray of Morning Mist. When laning, Yorick has very specific windows of opportunity to make strong trade, and misusing that opportunity can leave him very vulnerable. The mean old monk is in position for a strong play here, but he missed his E, causing his walkers to ignore the Grand Duelist. Fiora wisely takes this opportunity to pick off the missed walkers, leaving Yorick's schedule wide open for a fencing lesson. You know what they say, good fencing makes good neighbors. Yorick is better than just about anyone when you need to press an advantage after a team fight. Here Yorick saves his ultimate until after his team's cleared out the bad guy, then summons the Maiden so her army can tank the first four turret shots. Thanks to the Maiden's passive, the defending wave of enemy minions winds up transforming into Yorick's minion wave. With a whole new wave of power tanking ghoulies at their side, the Shepherd's team blows through the inhibitor. In teamfights, Yorick is too slow to be a diver, so he's better off hanging back to peel for his parry. Here, Yorick wisely retreats to deal with the cold-hearted ladies who have flanked in behind him. He turns to help out his backline, quickly delivering Fiora her last right. As soon as Dark Procession comes off Koda, Yorick uses it to lock down the overfed Ash, who quickly eats a face full of boomerang blades. Should've ducked. 